What's up everybody? Welcome to my garage. Hope you're all doing well. You better be crushing life. Now in the last video you guys saw that I bought a C7 Z06. It's super sick. This video we're going to do a full tour of it. All the features, specs, talk about a build. Also break down the cost, how much I paid for it. What is my monthly payment? Which is <laughs> a lot. We're going to do the full tour, get over everything. But also uh, I need some shoes. Now it's raining outside, I'm opening new shoes and the top is off of the C7, so today's video is gonna get real. These are fresh. Oh yes, you guys know I had to get some air up temples with purple accents, baby. These are not, uh, these are not driving shoes though. I want to quickly remind everyone, if you have not yet gotten the Insta360 X3 camera, the new one that just dropped recently that you saw all over the internet, hit the link below, get yourself the camera, check it out. It's got so many features, you can do so much with it. Check it out. I just love the coloration of the garage right now. Yeah, the red Countach is throwing it off a little bit, but we're just holding that for James just for a minute. But Laguna Blue Z06, the black, pure black Bentley, and then obviously the KPMF purple with the Shelby. Now, there's one thing we're going to address off the bat because everybody in the entire world that watched the video commented about the fact that this is, that's an automatic baby, that's right. And all y'all are upset with the fact that I did not go manual, but there's a very, very relevant and good reason why I did not. That's because I wanted to drive it. Yeah, I can't really fit with the manual in the, in the C7. That's why I sold the Viper. I just couldn't drive it anymore. It was too difficult, unsafe. So I had to get the automatic in the C7 so that I could enjoy it and drive it safely. Because if you're new to this channel, to be clear, I can drive manual, I'm capable on some levels, but I do not fit. I'm too big. 6'6", 280 is not the good size to drive a manual C7 Corvette or 2001 Dodge Viper. Now, as you can see right now, the vet is extremely filthy because I drove it in the rain the other day. I haven't washed it, but it's raining again, so I can't pull it out yet. We gotta put the top on if we wanna do that, which is funny because I was driving the other day and I wanted to drive it with the top down. I knew it might rain, I took the risk. It started to rain while I was on the freeway and uh, Everyone's laughing at me. Now let me show y'all what I'm talking about with the automatic. We're gonna slide, fall in. Okay, so the steering wheel is telescoped all the way up and out. And if you look here, we've got a gap of like an inch and a half right there. So if I'm driving manual and I got a shift lift off, it gets really awkward. And also the reality is as you start driving, you, you tend to slide around in the seat a little bit, right? My knees go forward a little bit. So as I'm driving even the automatic, my knee hairs, yes, I have knee hairs, they're hitting the dash. Manual is just not doable in a safe manner and comfortable manner. I want to drive this car a lot. If that reason is not good enough for you, well, it's good enough for me. Now, that being said, I'm going to show you guys a little bit later on, but the paddle shifters, the shifting, the, the time from when you click the shift to when it actually shifts is so slow. The actual shift is fast, but the recognition from when you hit the paddle to the actual shift is super slow. I probably couldn't shift any faster in a manual, obviously, but still, it is slow. I will acknowledge that. Now, while we're inside, I'm going to touch on a couple key features that made me want to get this specific car. One of it is the red trim. That was a $395 option back in 2016 when this thing was new. Also, it does have the carbon fiber trim. That is something like... I I just wanted that so bad. It's so clean, soft, subtle. That was $995 when that was new. Also, this is the 3LZ preferred equipment package. It's basically got like upgraded leather. It's Napa leather and there's a lot of other things apparently that are better. It's just overall better and I hope so because it cost $8,945 for the 3LZ package back in 2016. You're probably getting the gist of this already, but stock in 2016, this car, this particular one, was $79,400, but with all the upgrades and key features out the door, it was $97,155. I got the window sticker for this car. Oh, and the sound system in here, it's bumping. I, I like a good sound system. It's got a subwoofer, we're bumping. Also, I gotta show you this. This is almost my favorite thing. It's a secret cubby where I can put my floss. Why it's not totally my favorite thing is because the button to show that the screen goes up and down is right here so it's a secret cubby that's not secret so everyone's gonna know my floss is there but if you move the button if you hide the button nobody knows and that would be the coolest party trick ever public service announcement floss regularly also this vehicle is mostly stock except there are a few things that the previous owner did to it one of them is the red paddle shifters a couple cool things in the back now I know the trunk is not usually a super exciting thing but this one it is. First off, that's just a massive trunk lid, which in of itself is cool. Secondly, the roof. You guys all know it fits perfectly inside the trunk. So you pop it off, you plop it in, you plop it out, 
you pop it on. Also, coolest party trick ever, you can still golf. Yes, golf clubs. If you wanna to drive to the course with the top off and you don't wanna put the clubs in the passenger seat, you can still fit them in the trunk, baby. It's a simple multi-step process. That's it, easy peasy. You get to go golfing with the top off. And yes, your driver does have to ride passenger with you. It is what it is. It's not perfect, it's not fast, but it's worth it. Now, if I'm golfing five minutes away, no, I won't go through all that, but if I'm golfing like 45 minutes away through a beautiful scenic drive, yeah, I did that and I'll do it again. Now, a couple more things really quick. I went out of order, but there's a secret cubby way down in here and I know it's not secret because everyone in the internet now knows about it but I can I can I can put stuff in there like a pair of shoes on this other side obviously Corvette put the battery here so well balanced so you need to put something secret in the cubby there that weighs the same as the battery also I thought this was really funny in trunks they put a little lever so if you get stuck in the trunk you can't get out whatever you pull this it pops the trunk and you can escape with your life but this actually just opens the front door yeah so you can crawl that way instead of this way. I just find that peculiar. I could be missing something, I could be wrong, but if you're in the trunk and you can crawl through the front, why, why can't you just open the front door handle? Why do you need the release mechanism there? Why wouldn't they just have that open the rear hatch as opposed to the front door? It just, it seems odd. If the mechanism to save my life requires me to crawl through that itty bitty hole as opposed to coming out the, the massive rear trunk opening, I might not make it. I'll be stuck there forever. Final point here, there's a handle on the inside to close the trunk lid so you don't have to touch the paint and get the car dirty and you just close it gently and it's soft closed. That's cool. Finally stopped raining, let's get this baby on the road. 650 horsepower, 650 foot pound of torque. That's a lot. Let's get her on the road, see how she does. Yeah, just come with me. I forgot to mention one other thing the previous owner did is they changed out this engine start stop button to this red carbon fiber one. So there you go. They also lowered it. I mean, this thing rides low. It's hard to get it out of my driveway. I had to get that shot for myself so I could see like, I think it's just scraping on that front flap under the splitter. We're obviously gonna get a new exhaust. This is what the stock exhaust sounds like. <laughs> I mean, it's good, but the issue is, and you're gonna see this right now, now we're just chilling. You can't hear any exhaust note. There's, there's nothing, it's too quiet. So yes, exhaust is coming very soon. In fact, in fact, we're gonna do a proper build on this. Yes, I know I say things like that, but it's gonna happen. I got a plan, mostly. One thing that's super cool is all the performance gauges that you can change right here. It's super cool to see all the options. Oh yeah, zero to 60. You guys know I'm gonna crush that. G-forces. It's just so cool the different ways that you can display different things. You also have your mode selector here. You flip it around and you can see, oh yeah, we got eco mode. That's right, baby, we got eco mode. Now, one thing I love about the Hellcat that I shouldn't admit, but I will, and I'm gonna love it about the VET, is eco mode because you don't always need to be spending all your money on fuel. You can save a little bit here and there. In fact, I need to save some money on fuel because you guys heard it. I need new exhaust on the VET, like ASAP. And not just an exhaust, I'm putting together a full build on this C7. We're talking performance, we're talking sound, we're talking visual, all the senses, smell, touch, taste, everything this build is gonna be legit and I, I'm gonna make it happen this year I know I say this a lot but I love the open top life also I love underpasses the traction though on this thing like I didn't punch it hard at all that was just a casual acceleration we got up to speed super fast but there is zero like wiggle waggle on the rear end this thing is planted planted i'm not used to that angle angle see i can get in fine i just can't exit now we need to go over what i paid for it how much my monthly payment is but i also want to show you how easy it is to pop the top on and off because with the viper obviously that was uh 15 years earlier it was a pain this is so much easier this is extremely light i gotta say 14 pounds 12. pop it 
And now that the top's removed, this is the secret cubby. It's just a cute little, it's cute, it's perfect. Wait, wait, there we go. Now this is the meat of the matter. First off, the hood, also extremely light carbon fiber. I, I think it's carbon fiber. That's a super cool detail right there with the vet. Just a nice impression of obviously Corvette. And then that 650 horsepower, 650 foot pounds of torque. We're gonna upgrade that. I'm shooting for eight something. And there you go. One thing again that Dodge and Chevy did right with the Vet and the Viper. The hood that pops this way is so cool. It's so unique. It's just different. I mean, look at that. You can see that looks cool as opposed to a Mustang when it's that way. It looks broke. Now, one issue we did have with this vet, it did have a cracked windshield. I helped use that in the negotiation of getting the price down a little bit. And as you guys know, I did not trade in the Bentley, so we still have the Bentley. We've got to uh, we got to sort that out. So with the vet, I paid seventy-seven thousand and fifty dollars. That's right, seventy-seven thousand zero five zero, and I financed almost all of it. I paid five thousand down, which basically covered sales tax. So basically, the whole car is financed. Payments around $1,200 a month. It's so much harder with the top on, but not as hard as the Viper. And I don't know if you guys heard that, but every time I get in, I bump the trunk button with my knee. It's kind of annoying, because then I gotta get out again. Close the said trunk, get in, and carefully slide under so I don't hit that stupid button. These are things that most of you don't really deal with because apparently I'm like in the one percentile or less of, of size, height in the world. Let's go baby. Nasty fast, too fast. All right, pay attention here to the shift. Pay attention. Now. Pay attention. I hit it. Now. See how slow that is? And I only know that's slow because I have a Hellcat that's way, way, way faster. The Hellcat's a 2020, this is a 2016, but still it's, uh, it shouldn't be that bad. Now one gripe if you will, you see that fuel gauge at the top right there? See how it goes full is on the left and empty is on the right? Well all my other gauges go the other direction. So I drive around all the time thinking I'm full. In reality, I'm almost out of gas. So I'm gonna have to really pay attention to that also. Uh, easy, easy. I have a decent amount of headroom, more headroom than I have leg room. So the fact even with the roof on, I'm still fairly comfortable. It's such a relief, especially for being such a little car, and I just have to say, I would have loved the Camaro, but I'm so happy, and I got the Corvette, baby. This is a really cool car. I'm really happy with my choice. This is gonna be a lot of fun. I grew up in a place where they told you what to chase, told you how to run the race. Every move was on the page, but I didn't like their way. Had to fight and misbehave. Had to find a way to change. Had to leave to find my way. Got up in a daydream. I beat my mind up there almost daily. It's how I pass time, no opinions safely. It's how I understand what I want. Seriously, I can't thank you all enough for supporting me and this channel and watching this video. I owe you guys a massive, sick build on the C7. I also owe you guys a, uh, a build on the Hellcat. I can't drive it anyways because the rear tires are shot from all the donuts, so I gotta fix that regardless. So I'm highly motivated because right now it's unsafe to drive the Hellcat. So. We gotta get wheels and then start the, the wide body. I, I said it, I said it, I, we gotta do it. I'm gonna go eat my pizza, so I wish y'all the best of luck. Make sure you go crush it. Taste. Dessert first, because I'm a grown up. I will run, run away, I don't have to plan it. I can go, change my fate, you won't understand it. All alone, that's okay, people like it's them, they don't want me to change.